Hi, my name is Brant, and I'd like to talk to you today about solar panels. I got solar panels installed in my house recently, uh, a little over a year ago, and uh, I want to just talk about the, the process and uh, how much it costs, how much time it took, um, what my expectations were versus reality, and uh, all the different players that uh, came together so that I could get solar panels installed in my neighborhood on my house. Um, I reached out to a program called Go Grow Solar which is a co-op group by through the city of Milwaukee. They've got different programs in different parts of the city, different parts of the state, um, and they all kind of work with uh, similar contractors, similar banks and so on throughout the state, but um, this one was for Milwaukee. And uh, the first thing they did was they put me in touch with a electrical contractor and they started putting together um, a summary of what I should expect, um, what's feasible, what I can afford on my house. So they took a look at my house, somebody came out and did a survey, and then they took some um, some photos from Google Images and uh, some other software that they have, and they generated this mock-up of uh, a simulation of what it would look like to have those solar panels on my roof. Um, so there's 17 panels in this particular arrangement, or an array. Um, the whole system would cost about 20 grand, and then after incentives, that takes about seven grand off after taxes and everything, the rebates. So it ends up being about 13 grand. Um, one thing I learned is that you, you still get the loan amount from your bank, your loan provider, for the full amount. And then these incentives come in kind of over the course of the next several months, um, especially if you've got federal tax credits that comes in when you do your taxes. So it's not like they hand you a check once they turn the solar panels on. Um, that, that comes a lot further, which I kind of already knew that, but uh, it, it's still something that, you know, until you actually go through it and you, you follow the uh, timeline. Um, Maybe you're not fully aware. Uh, there were a couple of expectations I had, assuming I would get some of the money a little quicker, but uh, the, the tax credit definitely comes with your taxes. Um, so the whole size of this particular system is 6.3 kilowatts. Uh, so that's how much I can do instantaneously if every single panel was operating at 100%, which they don't. Um, and you know that. You want to put as many panels on your, on your roof, on your surface as you can, so you can collect all that uh, precious solar energy. but uh, uh, not every panel is fully lit at all times. I've got trees around here and other things obstructing the view, so um, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, it's better to put more panels on because then even if you know all of them are operating at half power or something, you're still generating more than if you had fewer panels. Um, they estimated my annual production to be about 6.1 megawatt hours, or uh, 6,100 kilowatt hours, um, and that seems pretty accurate. I'll, I'll show some stuff in a minute here. Um, and the uh, estimated annual savings is about $500 a year. So prior to the installation, uh, they created a set of electrical drawings um, and put them in a PVC tube with a screw on cap uh, that they installed uh, at the new meter in the back of the house. Uh, so I just wanna go through these because they're, they're interesting if you haven't seen them before. Um, they include a scope of work. There's a lot of things in here where they, they say what standards they're gonna be building things to, um, they give you the information on what the panels are, uh, where that you know property is located, all this other stuff, so that anybody that's not familiar with the house themselves um, can figure out uh, you know where this is and what's going on. Um, they also have requirements for the city, for the state, uh, to make sure that things are anchored properly, that they're structurally sound, that if they you know weigh too too much, that they're uh, they put racking and you know secure things to the roof properly because of wind and snow. So I thought that was interesting. So here is the second page of the drawings that they created. Here's uh, what the house looked like without the solar panels before. Uh, here's the backside. They show diagrammatically where they're going to put the combiner, which is uh, basically a breaker box that, that brings all the inverter power together, and then the uh, the disconnect. So if uh, there's a electrical emergency or the firefighters, the house burns down or something, they can come disconnect the power from that. Um, here's our service panel in the basement, um, and then a diagram laying out where the meter is, where the disconnect and the combiner are going to be, as well as the obstructions on the roof. In this case, I've got two skylights um, that face south, as well as the 17 panels. And they get into some information. This is a, a bill of materials, uh, basically uh, explaining exactly how things are going to get wired together, what fasteners they're using. Um, the make and model of all sorts of different parts and pieces so that uh, if, if something doesn't show up 
on site or something uh, isn't installed um, that you can make a stink about it or at least question it and say, hey, you know, isn't this missing? Um, they also have some information here about um, the the anchoring and the wind load. So there's actual uh, civil engineering uh, numbers that go into this um, and uh, information about uh, the property and how they're being uh, laid out. So the type of spacing, the way that the actual uh, array is being wired up, there's actually two different strings. So there's one breaker for each one in the combiner. Um, snow load, wind speed, um, and so on and so forth. And then we've got a electrical one line diagram, uh, which is nice because it, it shows uh, diagrammatically kind of what to expect um, and how everything works together. It's a little bit more functional. So there's two different strings and 17 modules. So there's nine on this string, eight on this string. Combine that together, you got 17. They show the type of cabling that they're going to use to wire this up. Uh, this is the, the combiner panel that they have. Um, it comes with uh, the uh, uh, network internet web portal, so you can dial in and see what it's doing. Uh, there is a surge protector for lightning arresting, um, and then two 20 amp breakers for the actual uh, power coming in from the solar panels. Um, there's, um, let's see what else we got. Uh, 30 amp, so this is our, our quick disconnect. Um, everything's grounded, that's the green line. Uh, the service panel in the basement with all my breakers for the house. And then this power comes in through the PV meter or the uh, uh, electric meter that was added just to meter what's going on from the solar panel. Um, and then the utility meter, which this is the existing one that goes to the house. And then that all ties into the, the Wii Energy's grid. You can see there's no batteries here. There's no storage. So this just puts power onto the grid and I get credit for it. Um, when when this is all generating power. If I'm not connected to the grid or there's not any solar power being generated, uh, I can't use it. So uh, if for whatever reason uh, I get disconnected from the uh, service pole out back, um, there's nothing I can do. I can't run the house off of that. It probably would not be enough uh, uh, electricity. So here's a timeline of uh, milestones and steps that it took to uh, get the loan approved and get everything situated and installed. Um, from beginning to end, it was about uh, four months, uh, so I was kind of surprised. I, I, I thought that it would be a little bit slower than that, but um, the biggest waiting for me was uh, having the inspector uh, for the city come out. Um, there, was a, there was a period where they finished the installation, but uh, between July 30th and August 19th, um, the panels were just sitting there. They weren't actually in use. Um, so uh, you can see through the, the dates here, through May, through June, July, um, the contractors uh, and, and the group buy program really took care of all of this. Uh, Grow Solar and Arch Electric are great. Um, the installation took two days. I'll show some photos of that in a moment, but uh, the dates on the calendar here, you can see kind of spread out over the course of five months, but ultimately uh, four and a half months and we were done. Um, and I got my first electric bill with the uh, solar system attached. So the day of installation, it was actually two days. The first day, um, two guys put the racking um, and the frame to support the panels up on the roof. And then the second day, they came back and put all the panels up, as well as uh, uh, completed the electrical work that they started on the first day. So here's the back of my house. Um, this is the combiner. So this, this brings all of the... Uh, power that's generated from the solar panels down to a breaker box, basically. Uh, there's a quick disconnect, so you don't have to open the breaker box, play with any of the individual breakers. It just kills power to everything um, and severs the connection between solar panels on the roof and uh, the utility power. Um, so this con uh, conduit comes over here and then goes up, and then I have a meter for the uh, uh, solar panels specifically. Um, and then that goes and connects into the utility line the same as my house meter. So here's another photo once the uh, second meter was installed from Wii Energies. You can see there's still the uh, combiner panel and the disconnect and uh, then we got a second meter. So the way this looks is I've got the house meter on the right, there's my tube with my electrical plans in it, 
and then a photovoltaic system KWH meter. Um, and this uh, it works identical to the other one. It just doesn't have as much interesting stuff to say on it. I do have one panel that is not very um, productive because I've still got a direct TV satellite dish in front of it. You can see here's some snow in the winter. Um, the sheets will actually slide off um, because this is a nice black smooth surface. So it'll, it'll warm up um, even infrared if it's not a particularly sunny day. Um, if there's enough heat and energy getting through, you will get some power here. Um, and the, the snow and the uh, rain just kind of slide right off it. And that's what the whole array looks like from the road. You can see I've got my two skylights there and then 17 panels, four turned horizontally and the rest of them portrait. And this is what it looks like with me sticking a selfie stick out through the roof. So you can see there's these frames, these pegs that hold everything in place um, and that everything attaches to so it's not sitting directly on the roof. There's an air gap of three, four inches. Um, but yeah, not a lot of uh, not a lot of white space, not a lot of uh, trim frame on these. It's it's pretty much all cells. So here is the first utility bill that I received after the uh, solar panels went online. And uh, what you can see is there's three different meters here. Uh, I've got one on my garage that uh, I actually never use. We never power that up. Um, there's the house, which for this particular period was. 1,366 kilowatt hours. And then the cogen, which shows up um, as the uh, separate meter, this is the net metering meter uh, for what the solar panels did. They deduct that um, from what my house used. So the first month it was on, uh, or the first pay period, I should say, that was on, um, I generated 406 kilowatt hours. And the house used 1366. So 1366 minus 406, that is. 960 kilowatt hours. So that's how that actually bills, how they take care of that. Um, and then if you want to see what the value of that is, you've got to do your own math. So this is the web portal that I have. Um, there's a uh, small network box that came with the uh, setup and uh, I can log into this and it'll give me 15 minute intervals updates as to what, uh, what my solar array is actually doing. Um, this is uh, for today, August 29th. Um, it's been a pretty rainy, overcast day, so this has been a pretty pretty poor day for uh, solar PV, but you can see yesterday was a little bit better, and then uh, you've got all these different controls so you can show what it looked like a year ago or just yesterday. Um, they've also got, you can break this up by month, by year, by date, whatever you want to do. I'll turn these off because it looks a little messy, but um, you can see a good day is, you know, 20 kilowatt hours or more. Um, occasionally you get into the 30s. Let's see if I can get a good 30 day here. Yeah, here's the charts actually going up a little bit, but that's 23. I want to say May is pretty good. Yeah, so there's May 4th, 31.9, 30.5, and so on. So some days are definitely brighter than others. Um, and then you can also do for the year so you can see my month. And I've been running this for a whole, uh, a whole year now, um, about a week ago. And it says that in my first year, I actually did uh, about what they expected, 6.1 uh, megawatt hours. And uh, the original estimate was $516, and I'm at $855. Now, one thing that I want to keep in mind is over the years, the cost of electricity will change, and this particular setting here always remains the same. If you go up here and uh, you use their software, you, you set the rate and that's it. There, there's nothing that averages this over time or does anything else. So eventually this will not be accurate. So one thing I've done, and I would encourage other people to do if they're interested, is keep track of your own utility bills and uh, just put the information that's in. You can actually export this if you're a Wee Energies customer. I'm sure other uh, utility providers do the same. You can export this and just copy and paste it into a spreadsheet. Um, but I'm keeping track of it because I want to see what the actual cost of uh, the utility power is versus the solar power. 
over time. So what I just showed with the um, the web portal that shows your your currency equivalent, uh, you know, over a couple months, a couple of years, that's not going to be accurate. I'm going to either have to update it or um, leave it, you know, using the cost of electricity from today, years from now, which obviously will be different. Um, so what I've done is I've I've put in uh, my actual house electric use and then how much the solar generated, and I can come up with how much that's actually worth. Uh, so the savings that I've had over the last year or so is about a grand. Um, so you can see the number that it did show me was $855, and that's not quite accurate. So this uh, $67 was what I saved that one month and then so on and so forth. And the cost of electricity, of course, changes over time. So uh, whether it's 14 cents a kilowatt hour or 20 cents a kilowatt hour or 25, um, this will always be the same in this spreadsheet. And then every month it'll change whether it goes up or goes down from one month to the next, but I'm sure over 15, 20 years, it's going to be more up than down. Um, and then also paying back my loan. Uh, I want to actually see exactly when I break even. So the idea is to figure out um, when that actually occurs. So every time I make a payment, payments are about $300 uh, a month. Uh, every time I make a payment, it takes a little bit off of the cost of that. And then also the savings, however much I save by not having to spend that on the electrical bill, um, that goes into this as well. And I would like to thank you for sitting through this 20 minute presentation and uh, some of the information that I shared regarding Milwaukee and uh, the group by program that we did last summer. If you've got any questions, uh, leave a comment below or do a Google search for Greater Milwaukee Grow Solar.